Simple standalone electronic circuits can be made to repeatedly flash a light or play a musical note. But in order for an electrical circuit or system to perform any useful task or function, it needs to be able to communicate with the real world. Whether this is by reading an input signal from an on and off switch or by activating some form of output device to eliminate a single light. In other words, an electronic system or circuit must be able to capable to do something and sensors and transducers are the perfect components for doing this. The word transducer is the collective term for both sensors, which can be used to sense a wide range of different energy forms such as movement, electrical signals, radiant energy, thermal or magnetic energy, etc. And equators, which can be used to switch voltages of currents. Let's try to connect these three elements. The first one is our sensor element. Our sensor element comprises of each side, which is the input and the output. Your input, for example, is a device, and then there in the middle is the sensor element. On the other side, which is the right side or the right end, that will going to be your output device. For example, your your input device will going to be the microphone, and then your your output device will going to be a loudspeaker. Therefore, your sensor element there is an amplifier, for example. And in here, the sensor, we have already talked about that. There are many different types of sensor and transducers, both analog and digital, and input and output available to choose from. The type of input or output transducer being used really depends upon the type of signal or process being sensed or controlled. But we can define a sensor and transducers as devices that converts one physical quantity to another. Devices which perform an input functions are commonly called sensors because they sense a physical change in some characteristic that changes in response to some excitation. For example, heat or force and convert that into an electrical signal. Devices which perform an output function are generally called actuators and are used to control some external device. For example, the movement of the sun or the sound. I'm sorry, that is sound. And our number three is the sensor system. Has many different types. There are almost a uh, lot that is available to the market. And the choice of which one to use will depends upon the quantity being measured or controlled listed many characteristics of sensors that you can categorize or classify here. Let's take them one by one. We have 17 here. The first one will be the static. What will going to be the frequency of your sensor? The accuracy, how accurate your sensor was. And the sensitivity, of course, from the word sensor, that means sense, how sensitive your sensor are. For example, you, you are holding an iOS phone with a touch ID on it. Or if you know, if you have phone that has fingerprint on it, it is really a big plus if that fingerprint will respond, will respond uh, quickly or the faster than you think or than you expect. 
the distortion, how distorted it was, or how complicated this sensor will going to be. And then the hysteresis, yes, that should be more important. Is the minimum detectable signal. We will talk about here the range of your sensor or how big the size is the range of your sensor. As we talk about uh, on the previous module, the line non-linearity of this of your sensor, you should always consider that. The selectivity or specificity. Of course, if you are going to acquire a sensor, you should know the selectivity of its use to know the limitation of the sensor, including the threshold. We should still consider the dynamic, and it is in the equivalent of the static. Yes, the dynamic error response. Uh, for example, hindi tumugma yung fingerprint mo doon sa nakasave na data, doon sa cellphone mo. That is the dynamic error response of your sensor. Another is, if you can see here, the red ones are the dynamic parts and the white ones are the static parts. And they are all saying that hysteresis is the most characteristic of sensors and transducers that you should consider. The instability and drift, yes, like distortion and the noise. For example, if you know the um if you know the technology of Alexa or the voice technology of the modern Iron Man house, the noise or the sound it should be well detailed and the noise should be lessened for them for the sensor to know and recognize the saved data. Yes, the operating range and then the step response. And of course, we should not forget the repeatability of your sensor. The requirements for efficient transduction are precision, same response to the same stimuli, or repeatability, and accuracy, indicating magnitude value as close as possible to the real magnitude of the stimulus to be sensed. Minimum absolute error speed or spread. In general, the most common transduction techniques include piezo resistance, piezoelectricity, capacitive, resistive, tunneling, thermoelectricity, optical and radiation based techniques and electrochemical methods. These are the sensor energy forms I have just listed here in a tabular form. So let's start with the mechanical. The example measurements of mechanical is the length area. I mean the length, the area, the volume, the all-time derivatives such as linear, or angular velocity, linear or, or angular acceleration, mass flow, force. When we talk about force, I mean, when we talk about mechanical forms of energy, we must consider the force that you will going to uh, give. The torque, the pressure, yes, the pressure, as I have said earlier, the acoustic wave, the land and acoustic intensity for the thermal energy forms the temperature yes how hot it is or how cold it is the specific heat the entropy heat flow the state of matter if you still remember the state of matter the solid the liquid and the gas the electrical of course is 
as we always um, educate ourselves about electromechanical technology, this involves the voltage, the current, the charge, the resistance, inductance, capacitance, dielectric constant, polarization, electric field, frequency, dipole moment. The magnetic ones focus on the measurements of field intensity the flux density magnetic moment or permeability the reagent involves intensity the phase the wavelength the polarization the reflectance transmittance the refractive index and of course the chemical composition concentration reaction rate or the ph oxidation the reduction potential this picture is in accordance to the american national standards institute or ansi the definition says that this is a device which provides a usable output in response to a specified measurement this is what i am talking earlier this will going to be your input signal this one and then this is your sensor or the sensing element and then this is the side where your output will come out as i have given the example earlier your input signal here will going to be the microphone and what I have told you earlier, your sensor will going to be the amplifier. And then your output will going to be the speaker. Simple as that. If you have already thought yourself about this system, you will going to survive in this subject. The detectable phenomenon and physical principles. Put in order for an electronic circuit or system to perform any useful task or function, it needs to be able to communicate with the real world, as I have said earlier. Understanding the physical or chemical effects that yield useful transduction is important in selecting and designing sensors. However, these effects by themselves are usually not sufficient to establish an um, ambiguous sensor classification. Since typical sensors use more than one effect, a simple example is the diaphragm pressure gouge. The diaphragm uses one form of mechanical energy to create another pressure, generates displacement and strain. However, the creation of an electrical signal from the displacement or strain can be accomplished using many approaches. The diaphragm could be made of piezoelectric material in which the air would induce an electrical charge. An inductive or capacitive effect could be employed to measure the charge related to the strain and the deflection and thereby infer the pressure. Thus, understanding all the possible field effects and features of transducer materials behavior provides the most complete set of sensor design options. This will going to be our detectable phenomenon. Our stimulus are the ones with acoustic, biological, and chemical, electric, optical, thermal, and mechanical. Under the acoustic, we have the waves or the frequency, the amplitude or phase and polarization, a spectrum wave velocity. In bio biological and chemical fluid concentrations, gas or liquid, from the state of matter, except the solid one. From electric, we have considered here charge, voltage, current, electric field, amplitude, phase polarization, conductivity, permittivity. And the magnetic ones, of course, the magnetic field. 
The optical from the word optic is from the refractive index, reflectivity, and absorption. The thermal will focus on the temperature or the thermal conductivity and heat. The mechanical will always focus on the velocity, acceleration, and force. And now we will going to talk about the sensor taxonomy. I have three screens here and I'm going to show you the three different characteristics of the table being emphasized in the sensor taxonomy. The first one is this, the energy form it is either thermal, optical, mechanical. I just rename it as energy form one. And we have here our transducers. And its result will going to be the energy form two. That process will be called the self-generating sensor because we only have energy form that is only one. The next one is this. We have two energies for the input. We have energy one and then energy form two. Then there you go, our transducer. Our result or our output will going to be energy form three. This process is called the modulating sensor. And then the third one will going to be like this. The mechanical pressure, this will going to be our mechanical pressure. The piezoelectric material and the electrical charge. I'm going to give you an example here. For example, if you have already experienced going to a camping. And if you experience like... um. You are rubbing two stones. If you rub the two stones, that is the mechanical pressure. And then your piezoelectric material is the stone. And then your electrical charge will going to be the fire that you are creating. That is a good example of self-generating piezoelectric pressure sensor. That will going to be the end of our module one. Thank you and please don't forget to like and subscribe our channel.